praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Big shout out to the apostles and elders, in particular GMS who are the 100% truth, and all the other people doing the work. We teach non violence, sensible doctrine like the mark of the beast, like keeping your lamps trimmed and full and well oiled. And non violence, spiritual, spirituality kindness to Israel. Maccabees 3. Then his son Judas called the Maccabeus rose up in his stead and all of his brethren helped him and so did all they that helped with his father and they fought with cheerfulness in the battle of Israel. So he gave his people great honour and put on a breastplate as his giants. Breastplate of righteousness if you remember and got his warlike harness about him and he made battles protecting the host with his sword it's interesting the gut about with the girdle of truth I believe it was in the armour of God anyway in his acts he was like a lion and, and like a lion's whelp roaring for his prey Again, that's another, I mean, it's just, the scriptures confirm themselves due to the lion's work. For he pursued the wicked and sought them out and burnt up those that vexed his people. Wherefore the wicked shrunk for fear of him, and all the workers of iniquity were troubled because his salvation, because salvation prospered in his hand. He grieved also many kings and made Jacob glad that his acts and his memorial is blessed for ever. Moreover, he went through the cities of Judah, destroying the ungodly out of them, and turning away the wrath from Israel, so that he was renowned unto the utmost part of the earth, and he received unto him such as were ready to perish. Then Apollonius gathered the Gentiles together in a great host out of Samaria to fight against Israel, which thing, when Judas perceived, he went forth to meet him, and so he smote them, him and slew him. Many also fell down slain. But the rest fled. Wherefore Judas took their spoils, and Apollonius sword also, and therewith he fought all his life long. Now when Saron, a prince of the army of Syria, heard say that Judas had gathered unto him a multitude and company of the faithful to go out with him to war, he said, I will get me a name and honour in the kingdom, for I will fight with Judas and them that are with him who despise the king's commandment. So, uh, this guy, Saron, wanted to try and take down Maccabeus and get his, uh, and get his glory for the king. So he made him ready to go, 15, so he made him ready to go up, and they went with him a mighty host of ungodly to help him, and to be avenged of the children of Israel. And when he came near the, near to the going up of the Beth, Beth Horon, Judas went forth to meet him with a small company. This is like the pre-war negotiation, maybe a final chance to back down or surrender, who when they saw the host coming to meet them said unto Judas, How shall we be able, being so few, to fight against so, a mul so great a multitude and so strong, seeing as we are ready to faint with all the fasting this day? Unto whom Judas answered, It is no matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few, and with the God of heaven it is all one to deliver with a great multitude or a small company. So that means it doesn't really matter how big you are, it's God that delivers, you know, how big your adversary is, it's God that delivers you. For the victory of the battle standeth not in the multitude of a host, but the strength cometh from heaven. They come against us in much pride and iniquity to destroy us, and our wives and our children, and to spoil us. But we fight for our lives and our laws. Wherefore the Lord himself will overthrow them before our face. And as for you, be not afraid of them. Be ye not afraid of them. Now as soon as he left off speaking, he leapt suddenly upon them 
and so Sharon and his host was overthrown before him. And they pursued them from going down of Bethron on to the plain, where there were slain about 800 men of, of them, and the residue fled into the land of the Philistines. Then began the fear of Judas and his brethren, and the exceedingly great dread to fall upon the nations around them. So everybody started to become afraid of Judas, insomuch as his fame became uh, as his fame came unto the king, and all the nations talked of the battles of Judas. Now when Antiochus heard these things, he was full of indignation, wherefore he sent and gathered together all the forces of his realm, even a very strong army. He opened up also his treasure and gave his soldiers pay for a year, commanded them to be ready whensoever he should need them. Nevertheless, when he saw the money of the treasures when he saw that the money of his treasures failed, and that tributes in the country were small because of the dissension and the plague which he had brought upon the land and taken away the laws which had been there of old time. So that's that's to say that when you're not following the, the laws a lot of the time it, it results in plague, the land becomes sick. And the land will not serve you, won't it won't give you good health until it's cleansed. Verse 30, he feared that he should not be able to bear the charges any longer, nor have such gifts to give so liberally as he did before, for he had abounded above the kings that that were before him. That's he's been spending more than the kings before him. The treasury was getting dry. People weren't pay, paying him as much because, because there was dissension. People were talking about Judas. Wherefore, being greatly perplexed in his mind, he determined to go into Persia, there to take the tributes of the countries and to gather much money. So he left Lysias, a nobleman and one of the blood royal, to oversee the affairs of the king from the river Euphrates unto the borders of Egypt, and, and to bring up his son Antiochus until he came again. Moreover, he delivered unto him half of his forces and the elephants, and gave him charge of all things that he should have done, as also concerning them that dwelt in Judah and Jerusalem, to wit that he should send an army against them to destroy and root out the strength of Israel and the remnant of Jerusalem and to take away their memorial from that place and that he should place strangers in all their quarters and divide their land by lot. So the king took half of the forces that remained and departed from Antioch, his royal city, the hundred forty and seventh year and having passed the river Euphrates, he went through the high countries. Then Lysias chose Ptolemy, the son of Dorinomenes, Nicanor, and Gorgias, mighty men of the king's friends. And with them he sent 40,000 footmen and 7,000 horsemen to go into the land of Judah and destroy it as the king commanded. So the king is kind of being a little bit, um, the king is kind of being a little bit, what's it? The king is kind of being a little bit um, cowardly. He's, gone, he's, he's heard about Judas winning all these wars. And he says, oh, well, I've got to go to Persia to collect some money. You go and fight Judas, yeah. Take all these, take half of my uh, my army. But he doesn't want to go to the war himself. Yeah, Legitimately, he had to go to Persia to collect more money because his funds were low and the treasury is low. But it does kind of read like he did kind of sneak out of, of um, the battle. So they went forth with all their power and came pitched by Eminus in the plain country. And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much with the servants with servants, and came into a camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves, a power also of Syria, and also the land of Philistines joined themselves unto him. So they kind of like trying to um, you know, get ready to buy the slaves that are coming out on the war, you know, like they're going to they're getting ready, getting their silver and gold to trade the spoils. Now when Judas and his brethren saw that miseries were multiplied and their forces did encamp themselves in their borders, for they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people and utterly abolish them, they said one to another, Let us restore the decayed fortune of our people, and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Then was the congregation gathered together that they might be ready for battle, and that they might pray and ask mercy and compassion. Now Jerusalem lay void as a wilderness, there was none of her children that went in or out. The sanctuary was also trodden down, and aliens kept the stronghold. 
Okay, so aliens aren't necessarily outer space aliens. They're just people from not from not around, from not inside of Israel. No. So that's the, the stronghold is the city walls. So the aliens, so, you know, the, there's nobody coming in or out of Jerusalem. And the people that are patrolling the city walls are, you know, other hired uh, security guards. The heathen had their habitation in that place and joy was taken from Jacob and the pipe with the harp ceased. So aliens, that, that is the heathen, were actually patrolling the city walls. And Jude and Israel was inside the city walls. Wherefore the Israelites assembled themselves together and came to Masfa over against, over against Jerusalem. For in Masfa was the place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes and laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. You know, so the, so this is the same thing that had happened before when they were destroying all the books, happening again, you know. They opened the book of the law and they'd seen that the heathen had tried to over, over, and there's another scripture, I mean, I saw another, um, the way of the heathen basically is to infiltrate um, Israel by pretending to do their customs but putting in their their sort of disgusting practices in there and there was a scripture not scripture there was a video um done um about how um sort of a lot of western society is based around witchcraft that's hidden inside of christianity and that's the reason why you have all these gargoyles and whatnot and craziness in um on the churches and inside the churches anyway And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint their likeness, the likeness of their images. They brought also the priest garments and the first fruits and the tithe and the Nazarites. They stirred up who had accomplished their days. That's the old Nazarites, all the sleep, old old elders, sleeping men who accomplished their days. They done all the all the things they're supposed to do as a man. They done and achieved. They brought up women. They you know been on the city council, but then they'll be like, get up, get up. We need some advice. Then they cried with a loud voice towards heaven, saying, What shall we do with these, and whither shall we carry and whither shall we carry them away? For thy sanctuary is trodden down and profaned, and thy priests are in heaviness and brought low, and lo the heathen are assembled together against us to destroy us. What things they imagine against us thou knowest? How shall we be able to stand against them except thou our God be our help? Then they sounded they with trumpets and cried with a loud voice. And after this, Judas ordained captains over the people, even captains over thousands and over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. So he kind of marshaled them all out, just put some structure in the t into the team. But as for such as were building houses or had betrothed wives or planting vineyards or were fearful, those he commanded that they should return every man to his own house according to the law. So looking at the law, you can't make a warrior out of a man who, who's about to be married. Or a man who's planting, who a farmer. So the camp removed and pitched upon the south side of Eminus. And Judah said, Arm yourselves and be valiant men, and see that ye be in readiness against the morning, that ye may fight with these nations that are assembled together against us to destroy us and our sanctuary. For it is better for us to die in battle than to behold the calamities of our people and our sanctuary. Nevertheless, as the will of God is in heaven, so let him do. And I'll shut up there. Shalom.